The Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change issued a very dire sounding report at the beginning of April this year. What else do you see the U.S. or Canada or both need to be doing? Does, it, does this need to accelerate? Well, Canada has offered to, the same way we work with light vehicle emission standards, we've offered to work with uh, the administration uh, to work on uh, oil and gas regulations. Uh, we don't want to have one regulation in uh, in North Dakota and a different regulation in Saskatchewan <laughs> with the same oil field. Uh, and we've made that offer to continue to work together. I, I think the biggest challenge uh, that the UN has presented to all of us is an interesting one because when we were faced with the dire consequence of ozone depleting materials, uh, Canada and the United States, along with 14 other, other countries, got together and had an enrollment to get to, to slowly phase out ozone depleting materials and called the Montreal Protocol. Uh, our challenge now is we've got an agreement between the United States and Canada uh, called Copenhagen, uh, but most, a lot of countries are not part of that. And really, the, you're going to have all kinds of people talking about this has got to stop and that's got to stop. Uh, when the Paris meetings takes place. Which, but what really has to happen is we've got to take a small group of countries and expand it to a much larger group. Europe, Canada, United States are having various degrees of results in reducing, and some would argue not as fast as we should, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But there are lots of countries that are not part of that uh, agreement, and I think that that's going to be a, a real challenge uh, with international discussions in 2015. Especially some of the emerging economies that are using um, oil perhaps at a faster rate than, than they, certainly than they had before. Yeah, and they will continue to have, there will be a continue to be a demand on oil and world demand as more people uh, thankfully are able to go from uh, people that uh, you know weren't in the so-called middle class in their own countries and are rising in economic uh, uh, rising out of p greater poverty into more uh, sustainable uh, family incomes in their own countries. I think the challenge is going to be uh, on do we have you know it's not I'm not suggesting we should be lecturing other countries but I, what I am suggesting is is we have to have larger enrollment like we did with the the Montreal Protocol went from 16 countries on ozone depleting material to 165 countries. And if you don't have more buy-in to this UN report, you're just going to have finger pointing and people being blamed and, and, and it, it'll be hyperbole, not results. Do you think momentum has been lost since the Kyoto Agreement? I think Copenhagen, Kyoto's didn't have the United States in it and it didn't have China in it. Uh, I thought the president did a good job getting the Copenhagen Agreement, which we've signed on to with the United States. So I think momentum has, you know, I think the president, when he barged into that meeting of uh, countries, uh, I don't think he got enough credit for that. You know, he and Hillary Clinton barging into the meeting that he wasn't invited to. That's right. That and was I, quite an interesting Yeah, it was, I, you know, our prime minister was there along with other countries. Uh, you know, good on him, as the, my friends in Australia would say. Um, what brought you to Colorado is to speak about North American energy security. It's energy efficiency, which, which we've talked about. It's energy renewables. It's the development in a safe way on gas. And you've got a geologist as a governor here is pretty smart on how to do that, get that right balance. Although I don't want to get in the middle of any political debate, he says as ambassador. Pretty smart guy having a geologist in this area. And then you've got uh, oil. And Mexico has just amended its constitution uh, to provide for private investment in a publicly owned Pemex corporation in their country. Now that's good for North American energy independence because uh, if we hadn't seen that change, by the year 2020, Mexico was going to go from an exporter of oil to an importer. So I think the courage he showed in getting those constitutional changes is good for energy independence in North America in our neighborhood. Uh, we have 
oil, gas in Canada, United States, and Mexico. Uh, we have renewables. We have energy efficiency policies that we got to put in place, and we are putting in place. And um, I remember coming here years ago, and there was lineups at gas stations, and uh, and uh, you know we were pretty reliant on other countries that would go to big meetings in Venice and raise our gas prices, and also at the same time we had lineups. So it's uh, not the preferred way to go. Part of what is um, being harvested um, in that Keystone situation is oil sands. Yes, um, yes. Have you visited any of those yes, operations? In, in its alpha stage, the oil sands were, you know, had higher emissions than they do today. They use more water. They use 10 to 1 water to oil, and now they're down to 1 to 1. By the way, ethanol is about 3.7 to 1 uh, of water. I don't know the current numbers. I may be off a bit. I remember as Premier developing uh, some of these biofuels. And, um, you know, it's got to continue to go f with innovation. It's got to continue to reduce its uh, per barrel emissions uh, through energy efficiency, through in innovation, through uh, smart technology. Uh, Alberta has, unlike California, thermal oil, uh, which has higher emissions. Uh, Alberta does have an innovation fund where if you don't reduce your emissions by 12%, you have to pay a $15 ton innovation fund uh, in that province. Uh, people argue it's not enough. Well, it's, it's more than other places. It's, and and uh, uh, I just think that we've got it. We know that this is a tremendous uh, reserve of oil, but it needs uh, to continue to be, uh, it needs innovation to continue to improve its environmental footprint. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, there's no question, it's alf when it first started, uh, like everything else, it, it, need, it, you know, it has to, con had some work to do on the uh, sustainable side. And, it, you know, we have reclamation laws in place in Alberta uh, on land reclamation that doesn't exist anywhere that I know of uh, around some places, he says diplomatically. So, uh, so it's a work in progress. You're absolutely right. The other thing, since you bring up water, water is the other resource that um, I believe I've read that you think Canada and the U.S. may have some dispute over. Well, I think we've been blessed with water. Uh, we have we share three oceans. Uh, I, I made some comment. Somebody asked me, well, what do you think we're going to be dealing with five years from now? And I said, water. I didn't, and then they put the word war in after that, oh. but I didn't say the <laughs> word war. Uh, it made a better headline, though, I might add. But I think water is both an opportunity and, and is going to be a challenge. Uh, you look at the Great Lakes, we have 20% of the fresh water in that body alone. Uh, we have water projects I've worked on in Montana, the Flathead River where we were going to propose something that didn't make sense to the people on the other side of the border. Uh, the water doesn't flow always the way of the CNN weather map, so we got water projects going north, you know, water going north, water coming south, and you can look at the Columbia River, Lake of the Woods, Great Lakes, Flathead River, uh, Lake Champlain, you know, you name it, we've got water. Uh, we have blessings of water, but we can't take it for granted. We've got to uh, ensure that we m m manage the water quantity. You've got the Colorado River here, of course, it's always an interesting issue. Uh, quantity and, and ultimately quality of water. So I just think it's going to uh, provide a great opportunity. Again, we've been blessed in North America of where we live and uh, where we re reside as we are with so many other resources. Uh, but just because you were born uh, to resources doesn't mean you can take them for granted, in my view. A lot of water is used by fracking operations, yes. uh, and that is one of the concerns that um, Coloradans have. I'm sure you're familiar with yes. the communities that have uh, voted to ban fracking. Um, is, it, is it as much a controversy in Canada, um, that technique of well, releasing natural gas? Well, we've been doing it for a, a while longer, and, uh, you know, there are, we certainly see the benefits of affordable, reliable, uh, safely produced uh, gas. Uh, and I would say uh, to the industry here, uh, have the highest possible standards 
because if anything happens, you'll be defined by the, you know, the weakest link, uh, if you will. Uh, so everybody has to practice very, very high standards of protecting the water table and uh, policies that uh, introduce uh, the reuse of water uh, as a very, very, in a more sustainable way than just using it and abusing it. So I, and I know that Colorado's worked hard on, on getting that balance and more power to them. I think they got more of a legislative re or more of a policy regime, I don't know whether it's legislation, than other jurisdictions in, in the United States that I travel to. Thank you, Ambassador Gary Dewar, Canadian Ambassador to the United States. Well, it's great to be in the Mile High City.